Good morning. Welcome to the Healing Minute. Let's wait for some more people to join us. I'm not at the sanctuary this morning. I can't be there today, but uh, do the healing just the same. That's a lovely picture of Harry Edwards that you can see there. And his daughter Felicity said that that's a favourite photograph of hers because she remembers how many times when she was growing up she saw that, she'd look up and see that stare across the dinner table. It's lovely to think about. And so let's start our healing minute. We give thanks that we are gathered here today. We ask that this place be filled with love, light, friendship and healing energies. Surround us in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness to allow the flow of love and healing to come through us. As your crown chakra opens, you feel or imagine a column of pure white light filling your body. Then feel the balance and harmony within your body as the earth energy rises up through the soles of your feet and your base chakra. You feel your connection to the universal source of pure unconditional love, balanced by the nurturing protective love of Mother Earth. In Harry Edwards prayer, May I be thankful for all the blessings I already have. Grant me relief from pain and sickness, protect me from all ills, and grant me good health in the days to come. Remove all causes of imperfection and bring your healing ministers close to me so that I may be conscious of their presence and receive guidance and inspiration. Grant me courage and fortitude to overcome all adversity. Let me be conscious of your strength in all times of need. Grant me confidence to overcome my fears and not to anticipate harm. Teach me how to live rightly in your sight, to do only that which is right and true. I pray that good guidance and right influencing will inspire all your peoples to be as brothers one to the other and that peace shall endure for all time. Amen. And the sanctuary prayer. Heavenly Father, I surrender myself to the good influencing of your healing ministers in spirit, that through your divine healing power, the disharmonies within me might be overcome, and the stresses of mind and body be eased and lessened day by day. Help me to adopt a more positive and helpful way of thought, bringing me into closer harmony with those around me and with a divine healing purpose. And for those who are sick or in the darkness of despair, who do not know of the help that can reach them from spirit, I pray that awareness will come to them soon, so that they too might experience the upliftment of spirit that can lead us all through harmony towards true health. May God bless you. Amen. We ask now that all the people whose names we hold in the distant healing folder may receive healing for their highest good. We also request healing for their family, friends and people for whom they have requested distant healing. May they be placed in the healing light and receive that which they are allowed to receive for their highest good. If you please join me now in a minute's silence where we can send up our loving thoughts, our healing thoughts to our friends and our loved ones who need healing at this time. And please, as always, remember the animal kingdom.
our thanks and blessings for your help here today and to our friends in spirit. I've got a lovely story about a lady who has two, who has a granddaughter who is autistic. The story is called Care Plan. I'll read it to you now, but before I do, I'll just have a change of scenery. Right, that's one of the most popular windows in the sanctuary. That's in the chapel, it's the hands of healing encompass the world. And when I'm back there, being November now, If the weather isn't kind, we'll look at the sanctuary and go through the chapel. All right, care plan. One of the parents celebrated the exciting moments of a child taking their first steps, stringing words together and building towers of blocks. We watched and waited. But those moments didn't come for our precious granddaughter, Millie. Special tests and evaluations changed the landscape of our lives forever. When our daughter, Laurie, in words thick with painful emotion, explained, Millie's been diagnosed as severely autistic. Our family learned more about autism than we ever wanted to know. We watched in shock bewilderment as the condition swelled to epidemic proportions now affecting one out of every hundred children. I watched autism grow bigger than any of us and completely overtake my daughter's life, marriage and family. We prayed diligently, trusting God to set Millie free from this mysterious illness. We thanked him for giving his children the spirit of power and love and humbly asked him to fulfill his word and bless Millie with a sound mind. For years we prayed and for years there was no change. In fact, life became worse. What first appeared to be a hide-and-seek game soon became a serious issue as Millie began to run away. Gates, locks, deadbolts and alarms were installed. But with the, the agility of a gymnast and the nearly inhuman strength of someone much older and larger, Millie overcame all security systems. One chilly spring morning, the inevitable occurred. Barefoot and clad only in her underwear, Millie slipped from the house and wandered two miles onto a major road. God intervened that day and answered our continual prayers for Millie's protection. Miraculously, no one was hurt during the tire screeching, car spinning ballet. Quick thinking motorists used their cars to corner Millie. Highway patrolmen transported her to the emergency officers of family services and after hours of interrogations and phone calls Millie was reunited with her mother. Laurie kept Millie's escapes to a minimum by sleeping with doors and windows blocked by heavy furniture. The family primarily lived indoors in a house resembling a high security prison that nightly violated fire codes and general safety rules. Violent temper tantrums reduced Millie's room to a space with no cupboard doors and furnished in the battered remains of a once beautiful canopy bed and dresser. When school finally began, additional prayers were offered for the peace to surround Millie and fill Millie, enabling her to focus and learn. Friends and family joined us in prayer for her school teachers and other parents. Our prayers were answered when a speech therapist began working with Millie using picture and word communications. As Millie was able to more easily express her needs, the violent temper tantrums lessened. A specialist in behaviour modification helped Millie develop behaviours 
appropriate to retail establishments, grocery stores, restaurants and swimming pools. We were thrilled to hear of her first trip to the movies. As encouraging as these advances were, birthdays came and went, with Millie remaining nearly non-verbal, eating only a few foods, roaming the house at night and still having violent tantrums with head banging. Equally, distressed, equally distressing was her inability to comprehend or be sympathetic towards pain and the distress of other living things. She nearly drowned kittens, forced them into a zippered bag and then used them as a seat cushion. Pets inflicted blows that left Millie bleeding, but laughing. Eventually, Laurie's best efforts at providing round-the-clock supervision, structure and routine ended with a terrifying crisis. One afternoon, while baking cookies, Laurie caught a flash of movement in the hallway and looked up to see Millie dragging her preschool brother across the floor by a cord tied around his neck. His face had already turned dark blue. Laurie screamed for help and managed to free her son from the noose. Millie simply covered her ears and left the room. My heart broke when my daughter called and between racking sobs in nearly indistinguishable words said, Mummy, I don't know what to do. We can't go on like this. We held an emergency family meeting where the heart-wrenching decision was reached to explore avenues of full-time care for Millie apart from the family. As in most states, live-in facilities for the care of severely autistic children are few and far between. Another birthday passed and Millie was approaching puberty. Medications were changed and the side effects were devastating. Weight gain, sullen moodiness, physical awkwardness and an increase of major meltdowns so powerful that Laurie was no longer able to physically restrain her daughter. Hope was nearly gone when during a meeting with Millie's family, family services team, a member mentioned a group home opening for three autistic girls. Unsure that space was still available, Laurie immediately rushed to the site. The house, location and staff were perfect, but the timing seemed impossible. There was only one opening and just six weeks to complete a mountain of paperwork, medical exams and evaluations. Applications were arriving daily and the window of opportunity was closing rapidly. What had seemed like such an obvious answer to prayer now seemed a crushing disappointment. I poured my heart out to a dear friend. When she asked if I had been praying, I nearly lost it. Praying? My knees are sore from praying. I've prayed so long and so often, I don't even know what to pray for anymore. My friend patiently listened and then lovingly said, this is the perfect situation for God to do something big. She reminded me that it's when we come to the utter end of our, inhum of our human resources that he delights in demonstrating his ability to work miracles. We ended our conversation in prayer. God help me to put my trust in you and your care plan. Incredibly at that moment, I let go of the situation and placed Millie in the hands of her loving creator. The series of events that followed could only have been orchestrated by God's handiwork. Weeks earlier, I had written a letter to Senator Thurman asking for his assistance in securing placement for Millie. Now, with only five days left to qualify, a member of his staff phoned, promising to see what could be done. No guarantees. Two days later, my daughter Laurie called. Mum, Millie was accepted. I fell to my knees and raised my hands high as rivers of joy and thanksgiving rolled across my cheeks. Millie is now 17 years old well adjusted to group home life and through her public school's special education program has made great strides. She speaks in complete sentences, writes her name, works simple math problems and reads at a second grade level. Her drawings won blue ribbons and a fundraising event. One created a vigorous flurry of bidding. New challenges and her future as a severely autistic adult continue to keep us praying. But now we've learned to trust 
in God's plans. That's Penny Hunt by Penny Hunt. Thank you so much for, for sending that in. It's wonderful. And I'd like to read you a little poem. It's written from the perspective of somebody who's passed over. But at the same time wants to care for their loved ones. I'll read it to you and see if you think it's as wonderful as I do. It's called Crossing Over. Oh, please don't feel guilty. It was just my time to go. I see you're still feeling sad and the tears just seem to flow. We all come to earth for our lifetime and for some it's not many years. I don't want you to keep crying. You're shedding so many tears. I haven't really left you, even though it may seem so. I have just gone to my heavenly home and I'm closer to you than you know. Just believe that when you say my name, I'm standing next to you. I know you long to see me, but there's nothing I can do. But I'll still send you messages and hope you understand that when your time comes to cross over, I'll be there to take your hand. I think that's marvellous. I think it's wonderful. I think those words are wonderful. I found that on the net and sadly there's no name to, to credit it with. But I still think it, it's, 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 it says everything. I, I think it's, one, it's a wonderful, wonderful poem. Anyway, thank you for listening to me. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm not sure who'll be here next week. But I'll be here the week, uh, the week after on November the 3rd. So, take care. And bye-bye.